The Red Dragon issued orders in the form of palpables and edicts. His orders started the conquest of the New World. It started the Inquisition, and it also started the transatlantic slave trade. Each of these three events alone was responsible for the killing of thousands or millions of people. Let's take a closer look at our timeline. We previously reviewed the palpable Dumb Diverses, which was issued June 18, 1452. And we also reviewed the palpable Romanus Pontifex, which was issued January 5, 1455. Both of these palpable bulls authorized the conquest of the New World, along with authorizing slavery, as well as the establishment and spreading of churches around the world. And around this time is when Portugal began taking captives off the northwest coast of Africa. Let's read the following reference. Page 339. Abrabanel was not the only Jewish favorite at Alfonso's court. Two brothers, Ibn Yachia Negro. Also frequented the court of Lisbon. They were sons of a certain Don Dawid who had recommended them not to invest their rich inheritance in real estate, he saw that banishment was in store for the Portuguese Jews. As long as Isaac Abrabanel enjoyed the king's favor, he was as a shield and a wall for his race and delivered the sufferers from their oppressors, healed differences, and kept fierce lions at bay. As described by his poetical son, Judah Leon, he who had a warm heart for all afflicted was father to the orphan and counselor to the sorrow, felt yet deeper compassion for the unfortunate of his own people. When Alfonso conquered the port of Arizilla in Africa, the victors brought with them among many thousand captives, Moors, 250 Jews, who were sold as slaves throughout the kingdom. That the Jews and Jewesses should be doomed to the miseries of slavery was unendurable to Abrabanel's heart. At his summons, a committee of 12 representatives of the Lisbon community formed and collected funds. Then, with a colleague, he traveled over the whole country and redeemed the Jewish slaves, often at a high price. The ransomed Jews and Jewesses, adults and children, were clothed, lodged, and maintained until they had learned the language of the country and were able to support themselves. A Brabanel story was one of the few glimmers of hope for the children of Judah during this time. However, as hard as Abrabanel tried to fight the Red Dragon's persecution, in the end, he was destined to lose. The Red Dragon issued his orders to conquer the world, enslave its inhabitants, spread his churches, and persecute those who attempted to follow the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. This point in time marks a critical period for the children of Judah. This is where we find the birth of the Christian slave. To create its Christian slave, the red dragon needed to separate the children of Judah from their parents.
1492, Spain commanded all its Jews to get out. The Jews were commanded to leave the kingdom of Spain. In fact, Spain gave Judah three choices. Leave Spain, convert to Roman Christianity, or to be put to death. The following reference reads, and it reads, In the meantime, Ferdinand had made great slaughter of the Moors, and at last entirely subdued them in the kingdom of Granada. Having reduced the city of Granada itself into his power, and therefore to purge their kingdoms entirely of the Jewish superstition, Ferdinand and Isabel by a law drove the Jews out of Spain, to whom, however, after a long consultation of the wise men, was granted the space of four years, within which they were either to convert to the Catholic faith or sell their effects. And it reads, when the time was elapsed, they who persisted in their religion were forced to depart with their wives, their children, servants, families, and effects, and forbid ever to return into Spain, where if they were ever found, they were to be immediately punished with death and confiscation of goods. Skipping ahead. The Jews thus driven from Spain fled for the most part into Portugal and obtained from King John under certain conditions that they might live there for a certain season. The conditions were chiefly these, that everyone should pay to the king eight pieces of gold and leave Portugal within a limited time and forfeit their liberty if they exceeded it, or in other words, if they stayed too long. So we see the Jews left the kingdom of Spain and fled into Portugal. And notice the size of the kingdom of Spain compared to the kingdom of Portugal. In other words, the Jews who lived in the kingdom of Spain fled into the much smaller kingdom of Portugal. This resulted in a high concentration of Spanish Jews in Portugal as the following reference reads. The number of those who were thus banished from Spain were 400,000 Jews, according to Ruchelin and others. Mariana says, "'Tis not easy to reduce them to uh, any certain number. Most writers affirm there were 170,000 families departed. Others say there were 800,000 persons, a prodigious number, almost exceeding belief. Some of them who were late in gathering together their effects and would not turn Christians, were sold as slaves. And of those who left their country, Sarita tells us, many died of the fatigues of traveling or the plague. After the Jews fled from Spain to Portugal in 1492, roughly one year later in 1493, Portugal expelled its Spanish-born Jews to West Africa. Years later, Portugal then expelled its Portuguese-born Jews to the west coast of Africa. The expulsion of the Jews from Portugal began under King John II. This is when the Red Dragon began to separate the children of Judah from their parents in order to create what's called the Christian slave. As the following reference reads, and it reads, All Jewish children below 14 years of age 
were torn or taken from their parents' arms, dragged into the church, baptized into Roman Christianity. Then it says, those under three years of age, or those under three years old, were given to Christians to receive a Christian education, or in other words, to be raised as slaves. Those between three and 10 years of age were put on board of a ship conveyed to the newly discovered unwholesome island of St. Thomas or the west coast of Africa. Then it reads, those between 10 and 14 years were sold as slaves. Christian slaves. Let's read another reference. And it reads, by the year 1470, the Portuguese had found the equatorial island of Sao Tome, or St. Thomas, in the Guinea Gulf, off the coast of Africa. The climate proved to be extremely unwholesome for Europeans, and settlement was slow. The official chronicler of King John II, Garcia de Resendi, reports on one of the methods to populate this island that also throws some light on the tragic form of Jewish participation in the Portuguese Atlantic Empire. The king had allowed Jewish refugees from Spain from where they had been expelled in 1492 to remain in Portugal only in return for payment of an enormous ransom. In 1493 those who could not pay had their children taken away from them, baptized by force or baptized into Roman Christianity and deported to Sao Tome or St. Thomas in order to be raised as Christians. Skipping ahead, then it reads, nothing is known of their further fate, although later chroniclers attribute the thriving sugar production on the plantations on the island to the talents of these deported children and their offspring. As you can see, the children of Judah were taken from their parents to be raised as Christians on the west coast of Africa and also to be raised as slaves. Now let's go on to another reference which reads, the Portuguese that dwelt on this island informed the Netherlanders, the Dutch, that few lived above 50 years there. Yet, notwithstanding the great gain, templed them to tarry, several of them having two or three hundred Negroes that worked in the sugar mills, that John the Third, King of Portugal, sent a colony thither above 200 years before, whom though the unwholesome air destroyed, yet the place was not less desolate. For he sent new inhabitants, which first settled Guinea, which is the west coast of Africa, next in Angola, the west coast of Africa, and lastly on the island of St. Thomas, that so they might be better used to the air. Then it reads, that the said king sold all those Jews for slaves, or the children of Judah, that refused to embrace the Roman religion and it says and cause their children to be baptized into Roman Christianity from whom coming thither in great numbers most of the present inhabitants were descendants and again we see the children of Judah were taken from their parents and to be raised as Christians and slaves on the west coast of Africa and let's read yet another reference. And this reference reads, The first design of settling there was in the year 1486. But perceiving how many perished in the attempt, that they could better agree with that of the continent on the coast of Guinea. It was resolved by King John II of Portugal that all the Jews within his dominion 
which were vastly numerous, should be obliged to receive baptism or, upon refusal, be transported to the coast of Guinea, or the west coast of Africa, where the Portuguese had already several considerable settlements and a good trade considering the time since its first discovery. We also note that the Inquisition also sent the children of Judah to the west coast of Africa, just like the previous expulsion edicts or the commandments to get out. As the following reference reads, and it reads, it is at eight degrees from the line towards the south on the coast of Africa, between Guinea and the Cape of Good Hope. It is the poorest country in the world and living is exceedingly dear there, for it produces only some fruits. What costs 10 souls in France will cost 40 in Brazil and 100 there. No other traffic is carried on but in Negro slaves. The Portuguese hold it solely for this purpose and would not otherwise inhabit it, for the land produced only some fruits and cattle and but small store of these. Moreover, in Spain, they but seldom put their malefactors or their criminals to death, as we do in France. They send them all to these desert countries, west coast of Africa, to traffic there or to be sold as slaves. And we can also cross-check this by looking into the text of the Libro Negro. The Libro Negro is a book that contains the guidelines for the Inquisition, and it also contains the punishments for those that were convicted by the Inquisition. As we look at the punishments of the Inquisition, we see that the punishment of those convicted involved sending them to the west coast of Africa. As the following reference reads, and it reads, If noble persons, they shall be exiled to Angola, which is on the west coast of Africa, or St. Thomas, which is also on the west coast of Africa. Okay, let's review. So we show that many Spanish Jews fled into Portugal, fled from the large territory of Spain into the smaller territory of Portugal. And then we also read references to show that the children of the Jews were then sent to the west coast of Africa to be raised as Christians and as slaves. This was done by the expulsion edicts, but we also read references to show that the Inquisition as well sent Jews to the west coast of Africa. Now let's cross check our findings using an additional reference. In the 1500s, an anonymous painter depicted everyday life in Portugal in the city of Lisbon. Let's see if we can find the Spanish and Portuguese Jews in this painting. In our references, we read that the children of the Jews were taken from their parents. In this picture, we see a person being taken. Now, let's read a reference to see how these children were taken. And the following reference reads, and it reads, the Moors immediately passed over into Africa. And it says, and as the Jews were preparing to depart, the king commanded that all their children who were not above 14 years old should be taken from their parents and educated in the Christian religion. It was a most affecting thing to see children snatched from the embraces of their mothers and fathers embracing their children, violently torn from them and even beat with clubs. And in our picture, we see the child being taken and one of the captors carrying a club. So our reference lines up with the painting. Now let's take a look at an additional reference to see how many persons were used to take the children. And the following reference reads, and it reads, he was preceded by a turnkey and followed by four constables. In this reference, we see that prisoners were followed by four constables. And as we look in our painting, we see that there are two constables holding the child, followed by two additional constables in the rear, one of which holding the club, the other walking next to the constable holding the club, for a total of four 
constables. Now, additional references show that the Jews who didn't submit to the Red Dragon's religion, they were burned in the city square in a ceremony called Alto de Fe. Now, in this painting, we see that there is a gentleman being burned in the city square via an Alto de Fe. And we can also see this in our references where it says, at the place of execution, which at Lisbon is Ribiria, there are many stakes set upon there are prisoners to be burnt. And for an additional reference, we show that the Jews who were forcefully converted to Christianity were required to wear an identifying mark on their upper garment. And the following reference reads, and it reads, the decree which was published in most parts of Spain filled the Jews with such consternation that 17,000 immediately returned to the church and submitted themselves to whatever censor or penance should be inflicted. 2,000 of this miserable people, part of whom confessed that Jesus Christ was the true Messiah, were still put to death. Many were sentenced. Now for a quick note, just notice that the Jews, even though they confessed Christ, they were still put to death. As stated in the previous videos, the Jews weren't being persecuted by the red dragon for merely following the Messiah. The Jews were being persecuted because they were following the Messiah and because they were following the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. All right, well, let's continue with this reference. And it reads, many were sentenced to a long imprisonment and after regaining their liberty were ordered to wear two red crosses on their upper garment and we can see in this painting this gentleman has a red cross on his upper garment and then last but not least let's read a quick reference which discusses the color of these jews that are in portugal and it reads King John II in 1492 expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas, which had been discovered in 1471, and to the other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. And from these banished Jews, the black Portuguese, as they are called. These Jews are called black Portuguese. Okay. We read references showing the red dragon separating the children from their mothers and fathers. Once separated, the red dragon dispersed the children throughout their kingdoms and also sent the children to the west coast of Africa to be Christians and to be slaves. This was prophesied of the children of Judah in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 32 reads, Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hands. Verse 41 reads, Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. And last but not least, verse 64 reads, and Yah shall scatter thee among all people, from one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known, even wood and stone. Once the red dragon began creating its Christian slaves in the 1490s, the transatlantic slave trade started in the 1500s. Most people don't know that when the slave trade started, the first slaves to come to the Americas didn't come from Africa. And it is because only a certain type of slave could be a transatlantic slave. In other words, there were strict requirements for slaves shipped to the Americas. In fact, it was a law. And the following reference reads, and it reads, the King of Spain regulates the importation of African slaves into the Americas. The regular shipment of slaves from Africa to European possessions 
in the Americas began in the early 1500s, although the greatest growth would not take place until the spread of plantation agriculture, especially sugar, after the 1640s. The development of colonial labor needs arose from a combination of exhaustion of the indigenous stores of precious metals by the European looting, together with the decimation of the local populations by diseases introduced from Europe. In order to make their colonies pay, the Spanish needed workers to produce goods and people able to resist diseases that caused such high death rates among Native Americans and European settlers. The first slaves imported on a regular basis were Africans from Portugal who had first been converted to Christianity. And the following reference reads, and it reads, it was with the design of ameliorating the condition of the natives that she sanctioned the introduction into the colonies of Negro slaves born in Spain. The Early Transatlantic Slave Trade from a university webpage, and it reads, From 1501 until 1518, the transatlantic slave trade was comprised of black slaves transported from Iberia, which is Portugal and Spain. Direct slave traffic from Africa was not initially permitted for the same reason the colonists were repeatedly forbidden from bringing enslaved Muslims and Moriscos to the Americas. There was a charter granted by Emperor Charles V to Lorenzo de Gorivad for permission to transport slaves. If you scroll down it says, before 1518 the slave trade was highly regulated and consisted mostly of slaves being sent from Spain to the Americas directly by the Spanish government. The first transatlantic slaves came directly from Spain and Portugal and were shipped to the Americas. Note that this was during the time when Spain and Portugal were taking the children of Judah from their parents to be raised as Christians and as slaves. Yah willing, we'll take a closer look at the identity of those that were shipped directly from Spain and Portugal, as well as those shipped from Africa to the Americas. This marks the end of part two of our mini-series, The Christian Slave. Stay tuned for part three in the coming weeks. Now, as always, thanks for watching and sharing these videos, and thank you for all those who have donated and lifted me and my family up in your prayers. May the Most High bless and keep the children of Israel safe, along with Israel's companions in these last days. Shalom.